Joseph, the just man, is commanded to leave behind all appearances and beyond the law and trust. The child to be born of Mary, the angel said, is of the Holy Spirit. And Joseph is to take him as his own, and as a sign of acceptance, name him Jesus, Savior. So Joseph trusted and took Mary as his wife, and the child was born, Emmanuel, God with us. But the story does not continue, and they live happily ever after. On the contrary, the harried search of the Magi, the cruelty and conniving of Herod, and then the desert. The new Moses, the new Israel, Jesus, the faithful Israel, must make his exodus across the desert. The desert is the place of testing. And for Jesus, it is symbol of all the days of his life, even as for you and for me, the desert. But Jesus always did the things that pleased his Father. And so with beauty and power, the poet Matthew weaves the infancy narrative to tell us who Jesus is the fulfillment of the prophets and the Son of God. And how, like Joseph, all faithful disciples are to respond. You know, Matthew penned his gospel around the year 85. And Jerusalem had been destroyed by the Roman soldiers around 70. And the Jewish religious authorities, in an attempt to make the tradition uniform, began to exclude different groups within it who did not adhere to the strict rabbinic teaching. And they said, in effect, if you are a Christian, a follower of Jesus of Nazareth, you cannot belong to the synagogue. Now remember, Joseph, in Matthew's infancy story, symbolized the Jewish Christian agonizing over his exclusion. Joseph understands himself as a Jew and as a Christian. And he's tempted to doubt because perhaps his brothers and sisters, his cousins, his friends, they stayed with the synagogue. And now Joseph is tempted to leave the small nation Christian community and return to the community of his fathers the children of Abraham and Isaac and Joseph. And so he agonizes deep within himself. And he said to leave the community into which he was born. Do not fear to take Mary. Now in the infancy narrative, and this helps us understand why Joseph's infancy narrative is so very different from Luke's. But in the infancy narrative, Mary is a symbol of the Messianic community, symbol of the Jewish, of the Jesus movement, the church. Do not fear. Do not fear to commit yourself to the way of Jesus as found in the church. For he is the promised one, celebrated, mirrored, and followed in this people, however imperfectly. He is the fulfillment of the prophet. And Joseph agonizes, but he stays faithful to the way. It costs. It always costs Christian people to stay faithful to the way. There's always so much outside and inside that lures us to take an opposite kind of a path. But Joseph tells us what holiness is truly about. And now we understand the last beatitude in Matthew's Sermon on the Mount. Blessed are you when people abuse you and persecute you and speak all kinds of evil against you on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. And this is the way that they treated the prophets all through the ages. The person of Joseph speaks to all of us in every age in the community of the faith. He listened, and he changed his way and his understanding. 
But there are always those who, in the name of a rigid orthodoxy, resist any change, whether in the formulation of teaching or in worship. They look backwards, as though yesterday's way was present at the beginning, and it's not so. The community of faith all through the ages has changed, connected the word in different ways, sometimes more perfectly than in another age. Take slavery as a perfect example. Take the way we treated Negro people in the United States through the, through the centuries. The church changed in its understanding and its way of connecting the message. And so this change takes place whether in the formulation of teaching or in worship. But they look backwards to the, as though the way of yesterday was the way at the beginning. In the name of unity, especially in our day, many want uniformity. You know, we should focus on our better and more demanding dreams, those connecting with the betterment of the human family, like the so very human ways of Jesus of Nazareth, like the challenges that Paul gave the Christian community in our second reading. Beloved of God, he said, you are called to be holy. And always the model of holiness is Jesus. As, Je as Joseph was called by God, loved by God, so each of us, who we are, what we do, with whom we live and work, and when we follow our best dreams, our insights and understandings connected to Jesus, light comes to dispel darkness within ourselves and within our world.